Dead Can Dance apparaît dans la mouvance New Wave née à l'orée de la décennie 80. Les enfants de l'après-guerre, grandis dans les ruines des villes anglaises, inventent un univers musical nourri de références médiévales, baroques ou extra-européennes. La fidélité des adorateurs de Joy Division ou Ailes in Gaza a permis à Dead Can Dance de s'imposer au fil des années hors de l'underground. Brendan vit à la frontière de la République d'Irlande et de l'Irlande du Nord, et Lisa, la chanteuse, en Australie. Megamix les a rencontrés pour la sortie de leur sixième album, Into the Labyrinth. Pas la moindre danse macabre ne se cache dans le nom du groupe, Brendan nous en donne une explication symbolique. Un nom pour décrire le processus créatif de créer des choses à la vie à travers l'interaction humaine, de travailler dans une forme élémentale, avec la nature des matériaux, pour être trouvé dans la nature, pour faire des drums de bois, par exemple. Drums from wood, for instance, something which once had a life force. You could imbue through your creative artistry a, a vessel, a catalyst for bringing energies through, resonance, musicality. The symbol is, is something which allows us to communicate things more quickly, more directly, more emotively, more naturally through the use of the symbol. It's like being a sponge. The life experience is one of um, ab absorption, and you absorb life in terms of like your childhood and your memories, and e everything around you comes in. It's inside, you know, and uh, finds a home within us, and that's what creates. That, that's what is our creation and our personality as a person, and also our deeper inner mystery as a person. It, it will come through in terms of like bird song, in the nature of the wind in the sound of water, a river, you know, it's, it, it's, it's all part of the musical landscape. just really through a love of singing that um, I've been really, I suppose I'm a bit eclectic really, I've just collected from all the things that I've loved. Just love singing anything from nursery rhymes to baroque to rock music to whatever I love, I love voices. 
we've had a, a willfulness towards uh, exploring different sound sources created by many different instruments. I have a family of instruments which uh, have their own personalities and their own um, uh, idiosyncrasies too. Uh, they're there for w when we need to pull them out to extract them and we need their voices to participate within the, the framework of the music that we want to write at any given point in time so that they lie dormant. We were living, working, eating, sleeping, and making the work continually. That our lives wouldn't bear witness to um, the energies that are created when we actually come together, and we share the work that, that we've written separately, independently of one another. Mi Thank you, 
دست دارم It improves in the sense that we um, can communicate what we hear and what we bring through. We, we can arrive at it more quickly. It's, there's less labor. It's less labor intensive in what we do. And, and perhaps within that is, is the, the contextuality of, of artistry, the artisan context within that. You know? We know our tools better. We can externalize this internal kind of musical thing that's happening within us, and we can bring it out and put it into a material context so other people can share within that far quicker than we've been able to in the past. Sometimes I choose old pieces of music to sing because I love them and I want to give them a new, a new life. And I, I want to, it's not that I want to change them, I just want people to hear them. And I want to sing them too, because there's nothing like finding a song that you love and singing it. It's, it's a lovely relationship you have with the work and, and it's, it's a beauty, a, a real beauty. Well, in a sense, it's, it's like searching for one's uh, religiosity, finding music that's relevant to, to your culture. We're not Christians, but we're drawn to liturgical music that, that isn't based on evangelism through the words and the music, but actually find, find a middle ground that comes to the mu musical side of things. Like, so the Songs of the Sibyl is, is about an heretical prophetess of the Christian church, you know, an, a Gnostic conspiracy. Inspiration for the work is a voice, an inner voice, a primal voice, something that's very old, that has been within man for centuries and centuries, and it's a small key or a small reminder of who he really is, you know? And it has nothing to do with now, and, and we'll be replaced, and when I'm dead, someone else will be doing what I'm doing, and that will live on. And Generally, when we want to perform live, we enlist the aid of a band of rogues, basically, to go on a world tour from time to time in our European days or whatever. If there's instruments that, that we want to have access to that should, on the album, then we, then we uh, find people to play. But generally, we, we perform all the instruments ourselves in most of the albums. À voir Brendan si paisiblement installé dans la campagne irlandaise, parmi les musiciens et ses amis des environs, peut-on imaginer que les concerts de Dead Can Dance en tournée mondiale rassemblent des milliers d'admirateurs qui s'arrachent chacun de leurs albums, lesquels sont largement échantillonnés en série par les DJ techno.